I am Ajita R. Menon, PGT Chemistry of Atomic Energy Central School. In this video, I will show you how to detect the presence of carbohydrates, fats and proteins in foodstuffs. Now the carbohydrates, fats and proteins are biomolecules which have complex chemical formula and specific chemical properties. Now with the help of these properties, we can do certain chemical test to detect their presence in the foodstuff. Let us test for carbohydrates first in the foodstuff. The first test for carbohydrate is Molish test. Now for Molish test, let us take a test tube. Into this, we will add 2 to 3 ml of the foodstuff. And into this test tube, we shall add 2 to 3 drops of Molish reagent. Now shake it well. And then we will add concentrated sulfuric acid that is along the sides of the test tube without shaking. Okay, you will see the formation of a reddish violet ring at the junction of the two liquids, which proves the presence of carbohydrates in this food stuff. The second test is Felling's test. For this we shall take a test tube and to this we will add 1 ml of the food stuff and to this we will add 1 ml of filling solution A. Filling solution A, you can see it is blue in color, that is because it is an alkaline solution of copper sulphate. And 1 ml of filling solution B, which is sodium potassium salt of Rochelle. Now we will shake this and then we shall heat this. As the foodstuff I have used is a reducing carbohydrate and filling solution will oxidize the foodstuff and itself will get reduced to a reddish brown precipitate. Here the copper 2 plus ions will reduce to copper plus 1 ions and the reddish precipitate that you see here formed is cuprous oxide Cu2O. This proves the presence of a reducing carbohydrate. Now let us do the third test. For the third test, we shall use Tolan's reagent for the food stuff. Let us take 2 to 3 ml of the food stuff and to this I will add Tolan's reagent. Tolan's reagent is ammoniacal solution of silver nitrate. Now you can prepare this Tolan's reagent by treating it with treating AgNO3 solution with NOH till you get a grey precipitate and then dissolve the grey precipitate in NH4OH that is ammonium hydroxide. So you will get a complex of ammoniacal silver nitrate. As you can see here, the colour is slowly turning into a darkish colour. Now I shall place this in a water bath for 10 minutes. Now let us see after 10 minutes, you can see 
a layer of silver deposited on the sides of the test tube. Here again, Tolan's reagent is a mild oxidizing agent. It oxidizes the food stuff, the carbohydrate, and itself gets reduced to silver, which is deposited on the sides of the test tube. Now, this confirms the presence of a reducing carbohydrate. Okay, now as we can see here, all the three tests, the confirmatory tests are quite visible. The one, first one was Mollish test. The ring proves the presence of carbohydrate. Here, the fellings reagent has been reduced to the reddish brown precipitate and this is the silver mirror test, which confirms the presence of a reducing carbohydrate. Now record these three experiments, their observations and inference in the following manner in your practical record. Don't forget to write the aim, the experiment, observation, inference and the result. Okay, now let us test the presence of fats in the given foodstuffs. Okay, for here I have taken the sample of foodstuff in three test tubes. The first test is the solubility test. Let's see in which solvents these are soluble or insoluble. In the first sample, I shall add some water. And shake it. In the second sample, I will add ethanol, that is ethyl alcohol. Let's shake this also. And in the third test tube, I shall add chloroform. You should be careful with alcohol and chloroform. Let's shake this also. As you can see clearly, that in the one that we have added, water, okay, as you can see in the first test tube in which we added water, oil is immiscible with water, it does not dissolve in water, it does not mix with water, but in alcohol it is soluble to an extent and in chloroform you can see it is completely soluble. So oil is being a non-polar substance, they are soluble in non-polar solvents. The second test is an acrolein test. Okay, for this, I'll take again a sample, the test tube food sample. For this, I'll add KHSO4, KHSO4, potassium bisulfate, few crystals and then we shall heat it. On heating you will see that fumes coming out having a very pungent odor, an irritating smell of burnt oil. Here acrolein is produced and this test is called acrolein test. Okay, as you can see the fumes of acrolein coming out. It has an irritating steam. This proves the presence of fats in foodstuff. Now we come to the third test and third test is a translucent spot test you can take any paper you can take a filter paper and onto this filter paper you can add few drops of the sample you 
fold them. You can see the presence of a translucent spot formed on the paper. This shows the presence of fat and food stuff. You can do this test, the same test with certain mustard seeds or peanut and crush them between the folds of the paper. You will find a translucent spot indicating the presence of fats in these substances. Now record these three experiments, their observations and inference in the following manner in your practical record. Don't forget to write the aim, the experiment, observation, inference and the result. Okay, now let's test the presence of proteins in foodstuff. Here I have taken some amount of foodstuff. Let's take a test tube. To this add 2 to 3 ml of the foodstuff. And this test is known as biuret test. To this we will add 1 ml of sodium hydroxide. and few drops of copper sulphate. Copper sulphate solution. This is biuret reagent. You can see the blue color formed and this blue color slowly turns into violet color showing the presence of proteins in foodstuff. You can see the presence of a violet color formed there and that shows the presence of proteins. This is by urine test. Now let's take, go to the second test. The second test is called xanthoprotic test. The xanthoprotic test, let's take some food sample. And to this you will add concentrated nitric acid. You will see that the color changes to yellow. This shows the presence of proteins in the food stuff. If concentrated nitric acid falls on your hand, your skin will turn yellow, confirming the presence of proteins in skin. We shall place it here and the next test, the third test is the test with ninhydrin solution. Let's take protein again, the food stuff and to this I will add few drops of ninhydrin solution. Now let's gently heat the contents. You will see that the color changes to a deep blue color, proving the presence of proteins. So that's a deep blue color and this confirms the presence of proteins. As we have got all the three tests here. The first test, the biuret test, you can see it's quite violet. The second test is a xanthoprotic test, turning yellow in color with concentrated nitric acid. And the third test with ninhydrin, it's turned blue in color. So these three tests confirms the presence of protein in the foodstuff. Now record these three experiments, their observations and inference in the following manner in your practical record. Don't forget to write the aim, the experiment, observation, inference and the result.